With over 9,000 practitioners of law attending over 200 events, it was certainly a busy year for ERA. It was also a year that was still strongly marked by the COVID-19 pandemic, and this goes a long way to explaining the increase in activity. First, a number of events that had been scheduled to take place in 2020 were postponed to 2021. This mainly concerned seminars co-financed by the European Union and organized in the member states with local partners. We felt it was important that they take place locally, so rather than switch them online, we postponed them as long as it was not possible to hold face-to-face -face events due to the COVID restrictions. Secondly, due to those restrictions, the majority of the events we organized in 2021 were still online. When we negotiated this reorganization of our project with the European Commission, they asked us to organize more events than we had planned face-to-face -face, or to admit more participants that we would usually do. Pre-pandemic, we had to reject about half of the applications we received for face-to-face -face events funded by the EU, but online, there were no limits. Thirdly, in terms of our open program, each of our lawyers was able to organize more events online than they would normally do face-to-face. -face. This was important as the average number of participants per event is lower than before the pandemic, so we have to offer more events to reach the same number of participants. These are challenging times to be working in the field of professional training. I'm extremely grateful to all the members of our team for the extra efforts they have put into ensuring that ERA continues to deliver at the highest level. In 2020, surprisingly, we ended the year with a surplus of nearly 1 million euro. This was because, on the one hand, our funding model is reliant on important operating grants from the European Union and our host state of Rhineland-Palatinate in Germany. On the other, the pandemic forced us to reduce significantly our activities for several months and even to put our staff on short-time work. Our institutional funders, understandably, wanted to ensure that their money was being put to good use and we immediately put in place an investment plan for these reserves. Another consequence was that in 2021, we decided not to take up a grant from Rhineland Palatinate worth 350,000 uh, euro, dedicated to building maintenance. This is one of the main reasons why our financial result for the year 2021 is balanced, despite all the additional activity. ERA's mission is both to train and to provide a forum for discussion among practitioners and policy makers on the development of European Union law. It was therefore essential that we be actively involved in the Conference on the Future of Europe. We launched our own contribution just a few days after the official process got underway uh, in May with a hybrid event gathering over 200 participants online and a small but very high level group of participants, mainly members of the Court of Justice and General Court in Trier. Vice President of the European Parliament, Katarina Bali, and Vice President of the European Commission, Vera Jourova, discussed the future of legal Europe, will we trust in it? It was also an opportunity to present a Liber Amicorum to my predecessor as director, Wolfgang Heuser. We then organized 14 online public debates on the future of European law in specific thematic areas, ranging from artificial intelligence to data protection law uh, to the rule of law. Over 1,200 participants joined these events, which were facilitated by the leading experts in the respective field. For each topic, a report was submitted to the Conference on the Future of Europe. We hope that these contributions enrich that process and look forward to seeing the results. It is a change, yes, although it is anything but a leap into the unknown. First, I've been with the ERA since March 2005 as a member of the management team. I've witnessed, accompanied, contributed actively to all the major changes ERA has gone through since then. Secondly, I was appointed by our governing board in November 2019. The purpose of this early appointment was precisely to prepare myself as well as possible for this new role. I'm very grateful that I was given this preparation time, although the outbreak of the pandemic in 2020 slightly disrupted the plans for what should have been a smoother transition. This being said, 
It is a different position from my previous role as program director. After more than one year, I hope I understand ERA even better than before. And for sure, I have identified challenges or difficulties which I did not consider in the past. The first year was very dense. We implemented a very high number of events in 2021. But the achievement of which I'm most proud is the innovative and sustainable mobile working system that we introduced in good cooperation with our works council that benefits all our employees. It promotes the compatibility of family life and work for them, and it increases the attractivity and competitivity of ERA as an employer for future staff. Finally, I would like to stress that I was able to rely from the start of my new mandate on the good advice and broad experience of my predecessor Wolfgang Heusel, and I'm very grateful to him. The same applies for the former president of the governing board, Jack Center, who retired from his functions in November 21, uh, after more than 20 years in office. Their support has been crucial for me in the first year. The ERA staff, the other members of the management team, as well as our corporation partners, they were all supportive. I would say I'm very lucky. Indeed, in November 2020, the governing board appointed Julia Lafranc as director of programs and member of the management board. Julia started her new position at ERA in February 2021. Unfortunately, due to family reasons, she had to leave us prematurely in October. ERA is a family-friendly organization and we have full understanding for our situation. Julia remains close to us anyway. She's a member of the Board of Trustees and she was elected to the Executive Board of the Friends of ERA. Her departure was announced internally in early July, which left some time to the remaining three members of the Management Board to ensure a smooth transition and to look for a qualified successor. The latter was found and appointed at the Governing Board meeting in November 2021. His name is Viktor Vadas, he's from Hungary, he was a criminal judge at the Metropolitan Court of Budapest and a member of the National Judicial Council. He was also a director of the Hungarian Academy of Justice in 2013-2014. So Victor understands our work, knows our target groups and is an expert in EU law. He meets all criteria for the position and on the top of that, he's a very pleasant person to work with. Victor started at ERA in January 2022 and all the team is very pleased to have him. 2022 is a special year for the Academy, as we will celebrate our 30th anniversary. To this end, we are organizing a big Congress, which will deal with sovereignty of the European Union and sovereignty in the European Union. During this event, we will address the legal consequences of some concept that moved to the center of the public debate in recent years, such as budgetary sovereignty, strategic sovereignty, digital sovereignty. It will be an important moment for ERA and definitely an opportunity to thank all those, both institutions and individuals, who have enabled ERA to carry out its mission over the last 30 years and who, hopefully, will continue to support us in the years to come. But beyond this anniversary, we have great ambitions for 2022. One project that has been giving us a hard time for years is the creation of a new website. It seems that this time, after several failed attempts for very different reasons, we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and a new website should be operational by the end of, uh, by the second half of 2022. This will be crucial as it should allow us to move forward on other projects that have been put on hold precisely because we were dependent on the launch of this upgraded website. So if I had to choose one priority for 2022, it would definitely be this one. I should also mention the concretization and deepening of some goals that we identified in our development strategy 2021-2027, such as doing more for the young generation of legal practitioners or improving our presence in the, in the Western Balkan states. Tangible progress is expected in relation to each of them this year. We will all hold a renewed and enlarged edition of the so-called European Young Lawyers Contest and aim to sign cooperation agreements with associations of young legal professionals and law students. We will also invest in bilateral relations with key actors in the legal professions in the Western Balkans with a view to developing 
appropriate programs for them. We are working on the launch of a Western Balkans Fund with the Friends of ERA Association. Last but not least, in December 2021, ERA was successfully audited and awarded EMAS certification. EMAS is the acronym of the EU Eco Management and Audit Scheme. EMAS, and a premium management instrument developed by the European Commission for organizations to evaluate, report, and improve their environmental performance. Receiving the EMAS certification was for sure a major success, considering that only 10% of the companies that apply for EMAS validation manage to do so on the first try. That being said, this marks only the first step to establish our environmental goals and strategy. Becoming green, becoming greener, will remain on our agenda for the years to come and will require fundamental changes in the way we work. So there is plenty for us to look forward to in 2022.